Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 9th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We've got more news about QR codes. Overall, I'm not really considering QR codes of the huge threats that some people consider them, uh, but there are certainly some issues where the ease of use of QR codes also helps attackers. With that, there are two distinct cases where recently QR codes have been used maliciously, one apparently in Singapore. Now, in this case, the victim scanned a QR code in a restaurant, believing that it led to a survey, which of course offered some kind of price. The first thing that should probably have triggered sort of a little bit an alarm here is that in order to participate in a survey, you first have to download a mobile app on your Android phone. Okay, and you know, these days everything sort of is its own app, maybe not really all that suspicious to require the download of an app in order to participate in this simple restaurant survey. But then once the app was installed, it did require quite excessive privileges to accessibility features, microphone, camera, essentially gaining full access to the device. The app then used this access in order to take over financial applications and train victims' bank accounts. The other case was here in the United States and a little bit of more traditional sort of QR code abuse. Apparently in San Francisco, someone is handing out fake parking tickets, which conveniently come with a QR code that allows the victim to pay. These are then good old phishing websites that basically just steal payment data from the victim. The tickets were not only dated in the future, but they were also issued apparently by the city of San Francisco, where usually San Francisco tickets are issued by the San Francisco Municipal Transport Agency. Of course, something that maybe someone who is not receiving a lot of parking tickets may not notice. Of course, these are all tricks that may have worked with a URL shortener or just by tricking the user into typing a particular URL, but by making it a QR code, you give the victim just a couple of seconds to think about and maybe discover that this is a scam. And it's still a week until patch Tuesday for May, but we did already get an update for Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge, of course, based on the Chromium uh, browser, does update whenever Chromium updates, and we are now at version 113. There are a number of security improvements that come with this version, like, for example, sort of a better definition of the different security modes that you have between balanced and strict. Also, some vulnerabilities that are specific to Edge that don't necessarily affect Chromium were also patched. One affects the content security policy implementation, only a CVSS score of 4.7 or medium, and a privilege escalation vulnerability with a CVSS score of 7.5. And the latest uh, Facebook security report hits a familiar theme with a flood of a fake chat GPT. What happens here, and this is something I think I mentioned a couple times, this is not just affecting Facebook, this is sort of across multiple platforms like all the different app stores and such are affected by this, that the hackers are releasing fake software that claims to be chat GPT it may offer sort of an interface for ChatGPT, but often does also a number of malicious things. So just like QR codes are being used to trick users into installing uh, various malicious software, well, uh, the label ChatGPT on some software may do the same thing. And that's, of course, not unexpected, uh, given that uh, whenever we have big news items like this, there are scammers like this jumping on the bandwagon and using it to trick users to install malicious software. And then we got a couple of miscellaneous vulnerability. One is in Apache's BRPC, where 
B stands for better, so better RPC. Vulnerability CVE 2023-31039 does allow for arbitrary remote code execution. There is an update available, so make sure you patch. In talking about RPC, Pentest Partners disclosed a vulnerability in CyberGhost that is exploited by sending a crafted JSON payload to the RPC service. And again, it can lead to command line injection in the open VPN process. CyberGhost VPN is based out of one of those wrappers around open VPN. And again, patches are available. And if you don't have enough of me, I'll actually participate on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern in a Sans podcast. It's sort of a new thing that Sans is starting. It's a weekly podcast, but also a YouTube live stream. 10 a.m. Eastern. I'll add a link to the show notes. And well, let me know if you uh, like that as well. And uh, maybe I'll uh, participate in that uh, more frequently. Thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.